doing a podcast, Ben. <laughs> That's news to me. It's news to everyone, including us. <laughs> yeah. So what? We we thought, what? Why are we doing this? Um, we're doing this because no one's talking shit, and we have shit to say. Yeah. Okay. That's a good thing. We're we're thinking of calling this um, shit talking with Ben and Rich, uh, loosely based on the aquarium world that we're both part of. But who the hell knows what we're going to talk about? No doubt. I guess we could talk about anything. <laughs> we can talk about anything. So you could talk shit about anything. We shit talking is is applicable to many many things. <laughs> uh, who um um you tell um who I am and I'll tell who you are. Oh, that's gonna be super awkward. Yeah, I, it is. I'll go first. I'll go first. Ben Johnston. <laughs> What am I, part of the Flintstones? Yeah, you're a Flintstone now. Ben Johnson <laughs> is a long-term maintenance guru in the aquarium world. He lives in Texas, and he does a lot of high-end clients and a lot of lower-end clients and a bunch of clients, and he does really good work and keeps things alive and looking really good and healthy. Uh, he's got a lot of attitude about how things should be done, um, which seems to me to be more about doing it in a way that makes sense rather than following any recipes. So I love Ben. Uh, he's also got some of the best hair that I've ever seen. And, and there he is. Well, and what's the name of your company Ca right now? Captive Aquatic Ecosystems. Not Captain. Not Captain? <laughs> when should... I say it fast, people think that like I'm going to show up in spandex or something. Yeah, and I, I, could, I could for the right amount of money. I think you'd get more clients if you showed up in spandex. It's possible. Maybe even customer retention if they're like lonely housewives. Yeah. It's it did a lot of stretching before you pick up a bucket. <laughs> so Ben's been involved in the industry and the hobby forever. Like since uh, I know you worked at Houston at the zoo in like 2004 or something like that. 2000, 2000. Oh, geez. What was it? 2002 to 2004. And then before that, you were a hobbyist. Um, no, it, I guess. Okay. So it started in 1995 when I had my first job at an aquarium place in Denton, Texas. And it was like, I mean, to shorten it up, it was like two years here, two years yeah. here, two years here. I'd start somewhere and I was learning really fast and I would end up learning quicker than the people around me at the store. And then, so that would start to bug me. So I'd go to the new place and it seemed like awesome. But then I, I mean, I was, you know, uh, uh, Fama magazines and, but man, that was like uh, either early or before internet, you know? So I wasn't doing internet on any of this stuff. Sure, it was just sure, like sure. Fama magazine and Julian Sprung and Del Beat's book and Spine Fossa and Al Jacob Nielsen's book. Those were like, those were the big things. So you just started working and then went from place to place and eventually started your own company doing maintenance. Well, I guess I was working, going from place to place in Dallas, and then I moved to Houston and did the same thing. But then early on, the um, the senior aquarist used to come by the store I worked at and buy, buy water, and they had a problem with the person running the big reef tank. At the Houston and, Zoo? Yeah. And just on it, he used to do, like, I guess you'd call it moonlighting, but on the side, he would clean tanks. Yeah. And, and so one day he was like, dude, work at the zoo, because I was bitching about something at work. He was like, come work at the zoo. And I was like, yeah, that sounds cool. And it, it was, kind of, I mean, it, sound, it sounds awesome. And it was awesome. I was 25 at the time, had no kids. Where but I mean, it was, it was shit pay. It had good benefits, but it was shit pay. But, you know, at that time of my life, it, you didn't have to get paid that much. Right on. But it was fun, for sure. And then you worked for Aquatic. You, you sold the Eco Aqualizer for a while, but I think we should oh save that. Yeah, that's just, a whole nother story. That yeah, would be fun. I think we should do that, but I just want to yeah. just friggin' rip e people apart. Eco Aqualizer is what pulled me out of the zoo. Yeah, both, yeah, that's ha that that's a happy, sad thing, I guess. To, to yeah. leave the zoo and end up working for Eco Aqualizer is, is really interesting. Dude, it's a whole story. We'll have to leave it for, a, for another one of these because it's yeah. like we could go on and on, yeah. but you know, it pulled me out of the zoo. And then I was like, well, that was stupid. And my, my father is self-employed. And so he was like, make your own business. You've been doing this long enough. And I was like, but it's scary. And he was like, life is scary. Do yeah. it. Yeah. And so I was like, okay. And now you've never looked back and now you live in an orange void. 
Yes, I live in an orange box down by the river, and that's where the aquarium <laughs> industry has brought me. <laughs> uh, all right, do me, do me. <laughs> you went too long on me. Now I had to like you went too. Up. You went too long on you. Oh, that's true. <laughs> you, you, I, I, man, when I start talking, it's all over. That's, that's Richard why Ross. This. Richard Ross needs less. What's the word? Less introduction than I do. Um, he's that's obviously a famous aquarium industry personality, public aquarium guy, aquarium magna speaker on and on and on um, i have a huge huge personality huge. yeah something that starts with a p <laughs> <laughs> dude how much do you want me to fluff it up a I fluff your pillow i just was interested in what the short version of of introducing rich was like from ben's head uh, yeah I, th that's probably why you went longer on me because i need more introduction than you no i don't think that's true <laughs> i'm just some idiot aren't we both i know we could also call it two idiots two idiots we could call it anything uh ben and i met we met at a we met online I, i'm sure we met online dude then, can i do it let me do it do it do it because it was like a personal thing for me so were, i was touching you yes inappropriately <laughs> in in the pee pee place in the pee hole <laughs> In the pee hole. Yeah. No. Um, so it's just funny, like jumping. I mean, this is the early days of, of Facebook, you know, and mm. obviously I've been an aquarist since the early 90s. So, you know, I was getting connected with aquarium stuff that I could on Facebook, you know, and before that, I don't know how many personalities I necessarily knew. You take that however you want, like aquarium personality. But when you go to Macna, like all the people that you're like, Oh, should I go talk to Sanjay Joshi? I don't know if he'd talk to you know that kind of stuff. I absolutely do know that. Yeah. Hundred fucking percent. <laughs> but but it was funny because you know I started to see who is who and this and that. You know I knew from just articles like Macna like who some of these people were. But through Facebook I saw who they were talking to and this and that. And I saw that there was like a group of you know the Joe Waiulas and the Sanjay Joshis and the. Hold on a second. What? What do you? What would you like, child? Child. Oh, okay, no problem. She just needs to get something from the back room. I thought That's she was okay. coming. My wife ran across the screen. Earlier. I saw. I thought she was coming to beat me up, but she's doing something else. <laughs> it always makes for good footage. So you're cleaning up the dogs. Did something horrible? <laughs> a lake of something disgusting. I'm glad I'm a recording. Lake of feces and Fecal not lake. dealing with that. Bye, child. Um. So we, I'm but sorry. To make no, a make a long story shorter it just you know it was just me being me just being silly online and so you know it drew me closer to some of y'all but so i went to one of the first magnas that i've ever been to was the dallas one and oh, yeah. you know i'm just an aquarium maintenance guy for a long time it's not like i had been going to a lot of magnas and a lot of people knew me but so we showed up me and my wife showed up at the dallas magna and it was like later you know the night before and it was by the bar and I saw the circle of people and, you know, whatever, fuck you. But it was all the people that was like Joe Waiulo and Sanjay Joshi and you and, you know, just everyone. And uh, um, Julian Sprung was there. And for me, that's a man I try not to be. And if Julian ever sees this, he'll laugh because I'm like this giant Julian Sprung fanboy because because in the 90s when I got a hold of his book, that's like the whole reason why I do all of this. I get you. I had the same feeling. But so we were at the bar and I turned around and I saw the circle of all y'all. And, and I looked at that circle and I was like, oh, shit, I want to go talk to these people. But I was like, nah, no one knows who I am. And I was turning around and you go real loud. You go, Ben Johnson. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit. And so you're like, come here, dude. So I went in the circle and I just started bullshitting with everyone. That was like the that's, you know, that's all she wrote. Perfect. Perfect. I remember, I so think thank the first, you. you're welcome. I think uh, the first Magna I went to, I was working the reef nutrition booth and that was Houston. Really? Um, and, I went to that one a tiny bit. And I remember, I didn't know anybody. Well, I didn't give a shit about you back then. What? No, I, I wasn't shit then. I was local <laughs> then. I didn't do anything. Um, but I remember all those same feelings of like, oh, who's, oh, fuck, that's Sanjay. Oh, that's Julian. You know, um, 
Let's only mention Sanjay and Julian. Nobody else. <laughs> Fuck everyone else. <laughs> Fuck everyone. Um, Randy Donowitz. Yeah. But all those people, it was, it was, you know, all the, but you know, I, those were also just kind of the people I was talking to, but, but I didn't really know. So it was really, really cool to meet them. Um, and then I think the next year I was asked to speak at Magna and that was really, no, no, couldn't have been the next year. A couple of years later, I was asked to speak. Uh, and that was really that, I was like floored that I would be involved in, in that Man, level that's the of same stuff. Way I felt. So I did one at the Vegas Magna. Yeah. And when they asked me, I was like, is it a slow day at the office or something? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was fun. And I was, I was mortified up there talking and I thought it was a huge fucking failure. But at the end you were, you were in the I room was there. at the end, like these, like about 15 dudes stood up and they were like dudes that do what I do from all over the country. And they were tripping out. And I was like, at first I thought it was people that were going to tar and feather me. Yeah. But I was like, like Oh no. shit. And then we just had this long discussion. I was like, damn, they made me feel better. Like I didn't screw something up. Yeah. I, th I think it's really interesting. People like to see good speakers and they like to see people they they're familiar with and kind of recognize and because I guess it's like pre-vetted in their head. Um, yeah. But I, I think in the hobby, in the industry, there's so many people who have so many interesting things to say. Um, oh, for sure. You know, I love the idea. You know, when I ran the local club, I kept trying to get just people to give local talks. It's like you yeah. have you you have some experience that nobody else has. I want I want I want to hear about it. Yeah. Um, and I also love the idea of um, Magna mini talks, you know. The idea, maybe I'll bug Kevin about it again, but, you know, if we do a Magna together in, in real person ever again, but, you know, like, yeah. like, like a comedy club kind of setting where you do a 10 minute talk and we can do in two hours, we can do, you know, 10, 10 also minute give talks. People more exposure that could, yeah. I mean, man, I never would have like, got, I mean, I never would have thought, first of all, I never would have thought to go find someone, hey, can I talk at a Magna? And second of all, you know, it was a situation where you had to drag me up there and then I had to get over my fear. Yeah, that was so maybe like 10, 15 minute talk, like an open micer kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, except, yeah, exactly like that. The, the hard part about something like that is getting everyone to stay to 10 minutes because it's like we really only want 10 minutes and we're all and everyone will be drinking. So it'll be fun and it yeah. can be totally scientific. It can be totally anecdotal. It can be totally just personal and fun. I think uh, I would I would enjoy that listening to a bunch of people tell me stuff. Um, Drinking in the audience is good. And maybe even like drug use. That could be good, too. Yeah. Do, do, yeah. Like uh, everyone on ketamine. And, yeah. Uh, ketamine and tetracycline. Psilocybin. Tetracycline. <laughs> the tetracycline highball. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> remember? In the 80s, I remember in the 80s, we sold tetracycline at the fish store. And, Dude, uh, I used to have a, a co-worker that would, he'd get a cold and he would he just uh, eat guess, some. Yeah. That's why I was going to say like, the same it. thing. Fuck it, it's medicine. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck? This is the weirdest industry ever. Um, it's like, it's like think, a dude at the fish store like, well, you got a sore throat? Like erythromycin. Yeah. Like you got gill flukes? I was like 15, 14 or 15, my first job. And this guy ties the poncheck. He's like, here, <laughs> have a tetracycline. I was like, no, what? I'll have but it then. But then you remember, remember they were carded like in a blister yeah. pack? Yeah, 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 yeah. What company was that? Was that Aquatronics? Uh, there was a couple. Um, they also Wardley? came in, they, w Wadley, they also came in tubes. Remember there would be tubes with like yeah. three capsules in it? Yeah. That's the one I remember more than the blister packs. They don't do that at all anymore, do they? No, selling antibiotics has become a different kind of thing. Yeah. Do you do you medi medicate anything very often? I mean, man, I try not to because I, I remember from I remember from back then, like people would come to the store like my fish has a red fin. You're like, mm, like I'm trying to be a freaking veterinarian, you know? And I'm remember. Like, Remember the books? I got them somewhere. I'll pull them down next time. But uh, one of the fish finders, and it had like this whole flow chart as your fish. Yeah, flow chart. Yeah, yeah. You do the whole Looks thing. Looks here like you need some Marison too, pal. Exactly. And it was always Marison too. And what sucks <laughs> is they come in and like, my whole tank died. I'm like, I, 
I'm yeah, not a I guess I guess you didn't treat it fast enough. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you'll maybe you'll get it faster next time. Yeah. <laughs> there's always an there's always an in or out. An in or Man, an out. Oh, dude, I gotta say that that I mean, let's just free flow. Like we can talk about what the fuck happened. We are. There's for, only one thing on the list we made that I actually want to get to. Besides that, this for is for sure. All... I know what it is, but yeah. let me say this one thing and yeah. we'll get to that. Because that's rad and awesome. But uh um oh, maybe. <laughs> oh no, no, about so stores that I worked at. So like stores, fish stores that they're like, Yeah, we have a return policy when you buy a fish, you know, and you got the shitty little test kit in the corner by the sink, and someone comes in with the dead fish. And you test in this dirty ass bio, and you're like, oh, it shows you have ammonia. I'm sorry, we can't take the fish back. You know, and still we, we would do that all the time. It's horrible, but we would do it all the time. All the time. Uh, we did. Like, oh, well, what do I need to do? Oh, like, I don't know, but, you know, and yeah. I you remember- know, I always tried to be honest. I, I never purposefully did that, but I had coworkers that would straight up like do it on purpose to never let anyone return something. We didn't we didn't have a return policy at the first place I worked at uh, Aquarium City in uh, uh-huh. in Calif- in Canoga Park. I think it was in Canoga Park. That was and your the- first one. My first one was Fish and Chirps Pet Center in Chirps. Denton, Texas. Is it still around? Um, I think it moved, but the owners were super, super old. Yeah, yeah. Mine, they, they probably shut it down. Somebody else owns now. It's still there. Uh, really? I can't, I can't remember who owns it. I talked to them on Facebook. I keep threatening to go down because I think it'd be funny to go down and see it and see what it was like. And it was, you know, it was, it was all, you know, metal rim tanks. And if you touch two of the right ones, you get a shock, shock. while you're cleaning. <laughs> and, you know. Um, well, what if they're like, get out of here. They have no clue who you are. Like, what do you want? You're like, I came no, from here. That's fine. I kind of like that in a, in yeah. a store. I like hearing, yeah. I like knowing what actually happens in a fish store. Oh, yeah. Because it's the same shit that used to drive me crazy before. You know, the assumption of uh, you can never assume who the customer is, you know? Yeah. You know, somebody going, you know, well, you know, you, you know, you should keep octopuses and lionfish together. And I kind of go, really? Yeah. I'm just going to leave now, you know, or whatever. But I remember uh, back then not knowing nothing. And, um, I remember people stealing stuff from the fish store across the street and coming over like in a, with a, with nudibranchs in a, in a fast food cup. And they would oh. come in, they go, how much can I get from this? And the owner would come over and look and you go, well, nothing. Cause you took it from the store across the street and brought it over. There's here. another store across the street, a in, different in, store. There were three stores. There were two spaces in the Valley that had three stores all within a block of each other. That's like the Starbucks by a Starbucks by a Starbucks. Yeah, well, that, that math works out. There's a reason why they, they group like that. Um, That's like where Home Depot and Lowe's go next to each other. Yeah, they, get, they end up getting more business. Uh, there's a great video on YouTube, actually, about that, uh, about really? that process. I'll see if I can find the link and I'll put it up. Um, hey, dude, let's talk about, let's talk about Reef to Reef. Reef to Reef. So, <laughs> yeah. So COVID's really interesting. And so I'm looking at forms again. And um, a few days ago now, um, and it's like two days after Christmas right now. So this was happening like two days before Christmas. Um, there was a thread on Reef to Reef about um, LGBTQ reefers. You know, it was basically, hey, uh, LGBTQ. Hi, everybody. Hi, LGBTQ reefers. Post here and we'll say hi. And then there was yeah. a bunch of posts uh, about people talking about uh, I'm I'm queer and this is my tank and you know stuff like that exactly the same kind of thread as you know anybody from Texas here you know anybody like go karts you know all Did anybody people f- trying to find connecting things yeah, yeah that you see a million times a day on all the threads just here's a commonality in a bigger world of commonality so we can find yeah. people who are more like us um, sadly Reef to Reef decided that that thread shouldn't exist. Um, so they, they disappeared it, um, uh, and then posted a thing about why they disappeared it, which none of it really makes, it doesn't really hold water. Um, you know, they said stuff about that, uh, you know, they, they, they want it to be for all ages and not talk about sex. And it was like, no, no one was talking about sex. If anything, they were talking about gender and you have a women in reefings thread that's up. And that's, that's almost, you know, 
That is so almost exactly the same thing, right? Women in reason. It just seems funny, like as a heterosexual guy, that I just talk about like straight fucking or something. <laughs> right, you like, would. Out of the blue. Right, right. Um, I saw you said something that you were saying like, like, man, I wish I could get to my aquarium, but I've just been straight pumping my wife for days. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 there. No, no one's using it as a, as a way to hook up. It's just or, or scare small children. Yeah. Or convert into it. It's just a common thing. And uh, um, and in fact, initially, they took down the women in reefing thread because wait, wait, they took down the LGBT. Q T. Oh God. Yeah. They took that down, but then they also took down the women one. They took them both down because one of the mods over there pointed out going, you can't, you can't take one and leave the other. And then, um, and we'll leave names out of it because it's not our names to name people. It's not. And, um, in a, in like half an hour or so, the women thread went back up because, because women were like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, but um, that's 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 so not it's hilarious, like stupid hilarious. Right. But like the women women are just sitting there and they're like, no gay people, and women are just standing there like no women either. And it's like, what's going but, on? Well, I think it makes sense. If you want to have a rule that you don't talk about that stuff, then you gotta have the rule to apply to everybody. But see, um, the only people who are allowed to have aquariums are straight white guys. Straight white Christian guys. Yes. Oh, shit. Because this, this, this happened to me last year on Reef to Reef. Last year, yeah. I started a, a Ask the Atheist thread. Reef to yeah. Reef is, is very heavily religious. Um, the owner is a pastor. And I, that's fine. I mean, you know, I, I, I don't care for that. I think that's, you know what? It occurs to me. I don't care for that in the same way that they don't care for the LGBTQ people having a thread, but you know you what? Don't, you don't care for it, but you, you know, you'll, who cares? You'll, you I, know, I am certainly not going to shut down Christian reefers thread on any form. Cause it's not for me. I just scroll by it. It's not, and I'm not going to go into the Christians thread and go, there is no God. It's like, you know, that's not, that's <laughs> well, not, damn it, why not? No, that's kidding. not how you build a community. No, for um, sure. And, and I started, let me ask you a question yeah. because I don't, I don't, man, I, I've been in this industry so long and from time to time I have been on forums, but forums have never been like a big part of what I suppose because like I wake up and I grab a cup of coffee and I'm like, I mean, nowadays I'm looking online at reef news or whatever before I go to work and then I work and this is what I do all day long. Yeah. And then I come back and necessarily, so I have a couple other hobbies because you can't just, it's been 25 years now. I can't right. do this 24 seven. It's, it's just much, but, um, so I, n- I never been strong on forums. So it's funny though. I did pick up on all this that was going on through Facebook. Cause you and all my friends were just going like ape shit on this thing. So yeah. I followed that thread and I was like, damn, what the hell? But I mean, as far as like being super connected to the forum, I was like, well, fuck it. I don't care because I don't go on forums anyways. Well, I, I wasn't very connected to the forum either because they, they killed the atheist thread. And it was it was oh. and I started the atheist thread with like, you guys don't understand atheists. I'm but let atheist. me ask you a question. <coughs> let me ask, ask you a question that. since I'm not a forum guy. Yeah. Like when you say when you say like ask the atheist thread, I guess because I'm thinking it's a fish forum. And I guess if if I started a fish forum and I like I, I want to talk about fish, but but is it common that that big forums like that will have other sections? It's like, hey, you don't even have to talk about fish. Talk about whatever the hell you want to talk about. They often do. Um, uh, the lounge it's often called, or in um, on reefs.org, like, where I was like a reef mod, central, it was the sump. Um, yeah. And 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 yeah, they become contentious because people can be assholes and people say stupid shit. But it, if it stays all in that form, who cares? It was always my. Yeah. Yeah, I guess have... what I'm calling like off topic thread. Yeah. Yeah. But why wouldn't you, you know, it gets hard to decide what off topic is, um, you know, because exactly is women in reefing off topic? Kind of. It's about but, you know, they're they're not talking about their vaginas and their boobs in the women. It's just, they happen to be women and they have you know, a shared a experience for that on the internet. They, it's a not, yes, there is. <laughs> uh, 
it's a shared experience of being a woman and their experience in the hobby. You know, they talk about that stuff, but it's not sexual um, in the same way as the LGBTQ threat was not sexual. Um, and the atheist thread I put in the lounge because I knew it was off topic, but also, and I thought, how could this not be bad? How could this be anything but good? Because there's a prayer thread in the lounge that's been running since that forum started. So it's like, well, if you can have one, you can have the other, right? And of course, just like in the LGBTQ thread, I'm, you know, people came in and just shot all over it. You know, it was like, just if you don't care about this, go away. You know, if you don't like channel three, just turn channel three. It's not for you. You know, I don't go into the, you know, the fish only form and start going, what kind of assholes are you? Bullshit. What kind of assholes are you with just fish? You know, what do you like? Mini artist groupers? It's, yeah. <laughs> Fucking not even that. You're probably a Panther grouper type of guy. Fucking Queensland groupers are bullshit. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's just a. Uh, uh, bumblebee groupers are the shit. And that soap fish? What's that soap fish with the stripes? Oh, like oh. the clown soap fish? Yeah. The striped soap fish? That yeah. thing's the shit. Um, Those things get fat. I know. They're so pretty, though. But anyway. The clowns are, are cooler. Yeah. But do you remember the original? What well, I don't know about original, but the first one I ever saw was just the horizontal striped one. Oh, yeah. What was it? The eight-lined or lined Dude, soap fish? I don't fish? remember. This was all we used to see all these in the eighties, and then, but then the know. expensive one was the clown soap fish that looked like tattoo, almost like a Bengay cardinal. Yeah, and it's got that little it had beard. A weird. Yeah, I love that fish. Don't nobody should get that fish. It gets yeah, too it, big. it's called soap fish, right? Because it exudes, it is a soap like, fish. Slime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can you can wash your armpits with it. That's right. We could get Kai on, and he could tell us about that. Yeah. Um, so anyway, they, they got rid of this thread and, and, and that's not cool. I don't think that's cool. They were just a bunch of people who wanted to talk like anybody else. What, are they the biggest forum? They are the biggest forum. Um, Who's like second? Is Reef Central dead? It's kind of dead. There's some action there sometimes. Um, there's it's a couple like other forums. There's the Humble Fish Forum. Brian um, started that. And um, he's that's that's a lot about if you want disease information or, or medication. I that, always want disease information. <laughs> go there. And they're totally cool on that forum. Uh, Humble Fish. And they don't care if you're a gay woman. They don't care anything. They, uh, they're religious. And um, uh, there's some religious people there. And we've had wide ranging discussions about religion and not religion. And nobody has called anybody an asshole because they're religious or not religious. It, I just think it's freaky to have a public forum and then, but be too like divisive on if you're like running it to be well, all divisive. Like that, that's the thing that make that made a bunch of people so grumpy about this is when they, res when they put up a post talking about why they made the form disappear, they made a big deal about talking about how they accept everyone and want everyone to post, but not, but, but don't post. It's like you could in a thread, you could say, if you were a man, you could say, my husband says, but you couldn't have a thread saying my husband doesn't like it, but there's threads all over the place with people talking about their wives in the subject of the thread. And mind you, this was a thread. It was not a form. It was just a topic. Um, okay. And it got shut down because the bullies came in and shit all over it and they didn't want to moderate it. And then I think they just don't like a queer they people. They could just leave it alone. They could have, but they didn't. And then they deleted it. So they're, they're uh, on the one side, they talk about how they want everybody and they love everybody. Uh, but, but you people should just be happy with not talking about you because we don't want to hear about you. And so it's, it's just strikes people the wrong way it's it's there's there doesn't seem to be a good justification for doing what they did now there there actually is if they said hey we're a religious form and this goes against our religion we don't want to talk about it i'd say fine it's this they're not government this is not a free speech issue they can censor whatever they want on the flip side of that people can also react to it however they want um oh, yeah. you know they they, they so, so, so a bunch of people have been complaining. Um, I know some sponsors have made noise and have, have, have pulled. Um, uh, I know a bunch of staff over there has quit. Um, there's a change.org petition with the hope of just making attention to it. Nobody, nobody thinks they're going to change, but 
this is such a I hate to say it, but it's like how the world works. Like you have to put a dent in someone's wallet. Yeah, that's just and, how it works. And this one just feels so stupid, Ben. This is just such a dumb reason to it to... is stupid because, dude, I had first of all, I had such high hopes for 2020. I mean, even like when I was younger and reading like science fiction books and going, whoa, 2020. I mean, it sounds cool. And it's just like, fuck 2020. It's been the stupidest year, but one that I had such high hopes for. It reminds me, you know, I always tell myself, don't put like things on a pedestal because it'll disappoint you. 2020 is such bullshit. Yeah, I agree. There's a lot of bullshit happened in 2020. And it's oh. a man-made concept anyway, so who cares? Yeah, at, at first on Reef to Reef also, you were not allowed to talk about COVID. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because um, people people would say, hey, this disease seems bad. And then people would come and go, this is bullshit. It's a hoax. You're an oh, asshole. It was just causing like. Yeah. So Dude, I think one thing is this is why I don't go on forums. Because it can it can be a shit show. Yeah, I've been and thinking second about of all, this. I would never want to run a forum because if that blew up in my face, I wouldn't know what the hell to do with that. Well, yeah, you would you would learn. And I think I hope they're learning something now about this. You know, um, the change.org is doing pretty good. But, you know, I, I don't know when a form gets really I think when a form starts big, when a form starts, not when it's when it's small. There's a bunch of people who have got energy and thought and they're and it's a nice community and they talk about stuff and there's a lot of activity. And then when it gets huge, um, like, Reef, like Reef Central did and like Reef to Reef is now, it's it's just this unwieldy monster and you kind of have to let different people run different sections of it because you can't holistically. It sounds like we're talking about a city. It's huge. I mean, can't yeah, you they, say that too? Like a small yeah. village, everyone's like, "Cool, I made, I churned butter here. Give me some beef, whatever." And then a city, it's like, "Fuck you!" Yeah, like people shooting gets, each other in the street. Yeah, it gets too big. It gets weird to manage, and then you can make choices. And the, the, I think the thing that irks people about Reef to Reef is that they say that they want to be accommodating and happy and joyous and love everybody, but then they kind of don't. Um, you know, they say we don't want off topic discussions, nothing about religion. And it's like, you've got a fucking prayer thread that's been going on for years. And, and they want to argue that, well, you know, prayers aren't religious. <clears throat> you could put good vibes in there. It's like, well, it's, it's not called the good vibes thread. It's called the Man, prayer I know. thread. It's, I, this, is, so, this, is maybe a, this is maybe a minefield, but I'm, I'm also an atheist and it's like, I, I know some cool Christians. I'm not trying yeah. to piss on on a whole religion. I'm not trying to do that. But but I, I do see that in action a lot. Like, oh, I'm this and that. And then, you know, actions that show otherwise. And it's like, I mean, I'm a freaking fallible human. I'm not trying to say, you know, I try to say what I mean and mean what I say. Yeah. I, I fuck up all the time. I'm, you know, but... <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't have me personally. I don't have a, a giant sky daddy that I hide behind. Yeah. Well, that's what drove me away from religion. It was, we say these things, but then we do these other things that don't really match up with these things we say. And it's like, well, why say those things if you're not going to do them? But yeah. I, I'm, and then I'm, when you look at the book real closely, you're like, Oh, I got to stone people for wearing poly blends and eating shrimp. Like, I don't know what I feel about this. Right. <laughs> I'm fine with a religious form. If you want to have a religious reef keeping form, that's fine. If you want to have a religious reef keeping form that discriminates people, you know, that's fine too. I, I'm not going to, I'm goes not going to back. It makes it make, it's going to make your form small again. And that's fine. If you want to do, I'm not going to support you if you're discriminating against people or, you know, because why would I do that? Um, oh man, that's, that's one thing with all the, you know, cause everyone looks uh, the companies, Look for the big forums because it's important for them to to like put ads and stuff on there. But then that makes me think, like, ha has anyone like really gone and done a lot of work to like ask all the people advertising on Reef to Reef? Like, hey, you see this, right? <clears throat> well, I think that's in, that's happening or will be happening. Um, the timing is a little weird because it's the Christmas holiday. So, uh, you know, everyone's a, lot a little tuned out. Yeah. Anyways. And the, people are all on vacation and stuff like that. Um, 
But I know some have talked and I know at least one sponsor has said, I don't want to do that anymore. And I know some people who you can pay money for extra perks on the form. And I know some people have asked for their money back, but haven't heard a response yet. Um, Wait, what does that mean? Extra perks, like as a uh, business or a person? Yeah, No, as a person, like I, I guess you get a shirt and you get you get a cool badge that you put under your name on the form. I, I didn't, I didn't really pay attention to what was, um, what was being offered. I, you know, for the first six months of the year, I really stayed off of reef to reef because I was not happy with the treatment I got uh, as an atheist, which is, oh, almost that ex- thing. Yeah. which is almost exactly the same thing. But in the last six months, I started looking again, you know, it's big. There's a lot of people there. It's interesting. There, there are some discussions there that are worthwhile, um, but then they did this again and it's, it's just like, ew, I don't want to, I don't want to do investing that. Investing all your time in something. Yeah. That's I don't want to like do that. that. That's weird. You know? So, you know, maybe they'll, maybe they'll, they'll change. Maybe they'll just say, Hey, yeah, we're not, you know, this is dumb. We should just have this thread. So, I mean, going. as of now, like the, the women in reefing thread is back there, but the is. LGBTQ is not on there. Is. Correct. And, and, I mean, has like, like, again, I don't get all involved in it, but has the owner of that form is said like, well, this is what we're going to do. There's no like he, statements. He, he put up a uh, statement about it, about why he took it down. Uh, and it doesn't make any actual sense. It's full of all kinds of contradictions. And it's, it's, it, it's, it's really like a, like, I'm just saying words that will make me feel good about myself rather than that makes sense. Um, uh, when we post this, I'll put the link to that in there as well. Um, okay. I'll, I'll put the link to the change.org thing and it talks about the whole thing. Okay. Uh, but I would love them to just go, oh, nope. We just, if, if, even if they just went, oh, we're putting that thread back. I'd be, oh, okay, great. We can all be your friend again now. We can all participate in this form. But, but you, you can't know. you can't have a I mean this, this kind of like would start a whole bigger conversation outside of aquarium. So I just don't understand. I'm just gonna throw it out there. I just don't understand Christianity's like obsession about gay people. Don't understand it. Some care, some don't. It's it's just a weird it's just something to get over. And, and you know, it can't last. Uh in people are people and people are more connected now than they've ever been before. And the more you talk to people, you just find out that they're just people. Everyone's just a person. There's no, there's no weird cabal of, you know, queer people wanting to, it, there's just nothing. They're just fucking reef keepers who want to talk nah, reef I mean, keeping, you know, the, it's like, it's like, it's like a scuba diving thread or a, or a RC plane thread or a, or whatever, you know, Yeah. it's, it's, you know, I know I've seen threads, you know, are there any, Hey, any kiteboarding reefers, you know, cause Maybe, and just we, people wanting to shoot the shit about kiteboarding and then you're connected because you're reefers. Yeah, that's it. So, but it's then not, you go, you go in that little thread and you guys just show each other your private parts. Yeah. Meaning we show each other our tanks because it's fucking a reef keeping form. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just, there's, I just, there's no there there for me, man. I just don't see it. And it, well, I hope that gets resolved. That's weird. Me too. I, so I, I, I encourage mean, everyone to, to, you know, you know. Isn't there like a petition thing to sign yeah, to say, hey, that's the change.org thing. I'll, 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 I'll okay. make sure that's linked. And, and you know, there's no discussion of it allowed on the form. It's just disappeared. Um, it's like so, high school all over again. Yeah, yeah. It's so strange. And Richard, uh, we need to. You need to go to the principal's office. I got sent to the principal's office once for having green hair. Really? And the, and the principal goes, why are you here? And I said, to learn. Uh, Miss, Miss Cotter didn't like, she says she didn't like my hair. And he goes, it looks really good. Go back to class. Are you serious? I got sent to the principal once because I was wearing a Primus shirt that said, you suck on the back. Nice. And they didn't want to send me home. So they made me turn the shirt inside out. Perfect. So I just got more attention. Why is your shirt inside out? Because it's a fucking Primus shirt yeah. that says you suck. You're like, yeah. oh, cool. Yeah. Whatever. So weird. People are weird. Uh, we got like two minutes left uh, for this. Oh, in- quick. Let's talk about phosphate in two minutes. For this inaugural podcast video cast. Do we just cast. like 
talk about this stuff another time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I think the interesting part about what we're doing now is we don't quite know what this might be yet. We just and the know cool that, thing is that we don't even give a shit. Yeah. And you know stuff and I know stuff and we like to talk about stuff. So People seem to stuff. like to listen to us talk about stuff. We'll see if talking about stuff together is interesting. But don't read the comments. Don't ever read the comments. No, because you'll end up jumping off of a building head first. Yeah. I said that once to Penn, my friend Penn, and he was like, don't read the fucking comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. Which it sucks because there'll be like someone like, oh, I really like your stuff. And, you know, um, let me ask you about blah, blah, blah. But you're like, I fucking don't read. Because then the next guy's like, you're Nazi scum, die. That's and why like, Primus what? sucks was such a great thing. They took all the power away from people who said Primus sucks. Yeah. And they made it their own thing. Right, because oh, you could have. I had this, you could I have, get in trouble for this, but also I had a mighty mighty Boston shirt that was black, and it said, "Don't know how to remember that." I think that a song, "Don't know how to party," yeah, and it said that on the sleeves too. It's like that self-deprecating stuff. Because then a bully comes up, I'm like, "Well, I don't know what to say to you. You suck, and you don't know how to party." Like, yeah. okay. I, I used to. I had a shirt. Racism sucks. Fishbone shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I wore in high school a lot. That was good. I, I Dude, found one are, on eBay. I bought it. I love it so much. These are good bands. Good bands. Um, so I think we should wrap up before Zoom kicks us off because it will because yeah. we're we're grifting. We're grifting yeah. on the Zoom. Um, <laughs> that sounds right. cool. That sounds very 2020, <laughs> grifting on the Zoom. Grifting on the Zoom. Avoiding the COVID, baby. Stay safe. <laughs> With our 80s hair. Yeah. You're like... You're like early. Oh no, you're like um what band? You're like you like the Bangles and I like the Clash. I think the Bangles. Why do I have to be the Bangles? I don't know who like What do I got to be Mr. Pink? Who likes your hair? What band would be for your hair right now in the in the 80s? My hair? From the 80s? Yeah. Do I look like like this length hair like the who is that cars guy but geez i hope i don't look like the rick okasic okay yeah yeah you got... married a supermodel so he did and then he died um yeah that's what marrying a supermodel will do to you kills you instantly so you've got the who... cars hair and i've got the clash hair yeah hey at least we have hair look at that it's ridiculous is it purple no wait it's still got some blonde in it from yeah a long time ago You're blondie so now we're talking about our hair. We should get off this. Um, we'll be back at some point. We'll do another one of these because it's been fun. And uh, Unless we read the comments and someone's like, fucking yeah. die. And we're like, okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk more Reef stuff next time besides the one. Until yeah. then, uh, I've got an outro. I'd say, hey, be nice to each other. Cause yeah, be nice to each other. It's easy enough. It is. Fuck you, Ben. Fuck you, Rich. All right, we'll see you next time. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs>